For the first part of this investigation, Bertrand Monet witnessed the production of fentanyl by the notorious Sinaloa cartel on its territory in Culiacan in northwest Mexico. Now, he wants to see how the cartel sells the drug from distributor to consumer. After weeks of back and forth, Monet is meeting another high-up drug boss, a major producer and exporter of fentanyl. He's a well-protected man. And to get to his location, Monet has to stop off at a safe house controlled by the cartel. They cannot see me from outside. Puntero, lookouts on motorbikes, surround him to check Monet is not being followed. These guys are Puntero to the cartel? Yes, yes. The Pinteros signal to Monet not to go to the safe house. As Monet passes by, an army patrol is about to enter the house. Someone has sold them out. Two more minutes and they would have been arrested. Ah ben là, je rentre d'un endroit dans, dans Culiacan où j'avais rendez-vous avec euh, des hommes d'un de, clan du cartel que je voulais aller filmer sur leur ranch. Mais au moment où on est arrivé, il y a une, une opération militaire qui était en cours juste à cet endroit contre euh, ce clan. Donc, euh, bon, heureusement, on n'était pas dans la maison. Donc euh, on, on quitte la zone rapidement. Le risque, euh, c'est que ce clan du cartel euh, me suspecte de les avoir dénoncés. Bon, évidemment, c'est pas le cas. Donc euh, voilà, on va attendre quelques jours que, que les choses se calment. Ten days later, Monet arrives on territory controlled by the drug lord. After a 30 minute journey, he's picked up by some of the chief's men in one of their vehicles. The narcos, who are protecting their boss, fear the army will intervene if his presence is detected by drones. Bien, ben là, je suis euh, dans un ranch euh, avec un, un chef de clan du cartel qui a accepté de, de répondre à une interview. Euh, sur le, son business de fentanyl, donc euh, je vais essayer de lui poser des questions. Can you tell me your position in the cartel of Sinaloa? Ah, um, eh, soy mi propio jefe. Yo este, manejo un determinado grupo de personas. How many guys do you have in your group? 35. How many groups like yours do exist in the cartel? No, no, yo voy a la contabilidad de eso, este, pero son bastantes. You have one boss or several bosses? No, no tengo jefes. No tengo jefes. Trabajo por mí mismo nada más. Compro el, el precursor, lo manipulo, lo produzco y, y lo vendo por mi cuenta. For how long are you involved in the business of fentanyl? Seis años. And before this, what did you do? Uh, crystal. Cocaine. Why did you choose to move to fentanyl? Es, es para nosotros es fácil de producir y tiene mucho poder adquisitivo. Hay mucho, hay, hay mucho mercado. Where do you sell the fentanyl? Eh, no, no, no puedo decir eso. How much money do you earn a month? Like three hundred thousand dollars or more. So it's a very good business. Yes. I have observed to, that to manufacture the M30, it takes fentanyl. Where do you buy this product, fentanyl? Asia, in Asia. Y hay mediadores que traen el producto allá para acá. I see you have uh, many guns with you. 
Do you fight against other clans of the cartel? Sí, si es necesario, sí, pero no, 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 gente no acostumbra. Los tratos se hacen con personas responsables. Do you corrupt the police and the army? Ellos son personas corruptas, entonces todo el tiempo vamos a tener que mediar con ellos. Do you believe in God? Yes. But you still do this business? Yeah, we, 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 we have to keep our, our families. We have to work. Last question. Where are your main clients? No, 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 no puedo responder eso. The leader doesn't want to say anything about his clients. Even masked, he considers it too dangerous. L'unité de base du cartel, la business unit qui produit et qui exporte le fentanyl, c'est le clan. Le cartel n'est pas une organisation pyramidale. C'est une coopérative qui fédère une centaine de clans majeurs comme celui du chef que j'ai interviewé. Tous les clans sont sous l'autorité d'un état-major dirigé par El Mayo. Ismael Zambada Garcia, l'ancien partenaire d'El Chapo Guzman, le chef historique du cartel, aujourd'hui incarcéré aux états unis Sous l'autorité de son chef, chaque clan est structuré autour de plusieurs entités. Un groupe qui produit les drogues fabriquées au Mexique, le fentanyl bien sûr, mais aussi l'héroïne, la marijuana, le cristal, une puissante méthamphétamine, et qui réceptionne également la cocaïne importée de Colombie. Un groupe qui stocke et qui exporte les drogues, quelques spécialistes du blanchiment d'argent et toujours les sicarios, le groupe de tueurs qui protège le clan et en particulier son chef contre les autres clans du cartel, contre d'autres cartels et surtout contre l'armée qui sous la pression américaine mène une traque agressive contre les narcos. Chaque clan est indépendant et développe son propre business en reversant une part de son chiffre d'affaires à l'organisation pour financer les trois actifs, les trois outils que tous les clans mettent en commun et qui sont dans la main de l'état-major. La corruption à grande échelle des pouvoirs publics, l'importation massive de fentanyl pur depuis la Chine et la mise à disposition des machines importées d'Inde qui permettent la fabrication des pastilles de M30. The Biden administration has taken action against the trafficking of fentanyl. The drug has become the second leading cause of death in the US. Last July, Washington got the Mexican government to arrest El Chapo's son, Ovidio Guzman, and extradite him to the US. But to understand the economics of fentanyl, Monet has to understand how the drug is sold. In Culiacan, he meets up with a cartel narco he's known for several years. He's a leader from a major cartel clan, in charge of exporting the clan's drugs. Can you tell me your position in the cartel of Sinaloa? Here, I'm a part of the structure of the cartel. There are many sucursales. I belong to one of the sucursales. My position here is the sale here in Mexico, the United States and Europe. Which kind of product do you sell for the cartel? Eh, se mueve todos los tipos de drogas, lo que es cocaína, eh, marihuana, chiva, y ahorita lo que está moviéndose mucho es el fentanil, la pastilla, bueno, no el fentanil, la pastilla M30. How much does it cost to produce uh, one pill of M30? Uh, el costo de producción aquí, en México, te sale 60, 70 centavos de dólar, pero por lo que ya con todos los movimientos te queda un dólar, la producción final. Y esa misma pastilla se vende en los Estados Unidos de 5 dólares hasta 6, 7, hasta 10, dependiendo Los Ángeles, Nueva York, dependiendo de lugares más caro. Europa se está entrando en 10 euros, de 10 a 14, 13 euros, dependiendo del lugar. So it's a good business. Sí, es muy buen business, es muy buen negocio, porque es muy poca la inversión, muy pequeña la pastilla, muy fácil de, de exportarla y, de este, y es mucho la ganancia. Porque es algo que se puede producir aquí, la cocaína no se produce aquí. Ahí en Europa se está pidiendo mucho, está, está funcionando, está entrando en el mercado y se está subiendo. Ahorita conviene mejor el mercado europeo porque paga más y es menos problema. Es, hay menos robo, menos, más tranquilo. Do you sell the drug directly in Europe or do you work with local partners? Uh, hay personas de Europa, de Francia, que son los que lo compran. De hecho, nosotros no vamos y lo vendemos allá. Nosotros se lo enviamos a ellos porque ellos lo piden. 
and you don't fear to have competitors in Europe or in the United States? No, no hay problema. Todo mundo va a intentar siempre eh, vender todo lo que te piden. Va a haber mucha gente, no más nosotros. ¿Por qué? Porque es mucha la ganancia. Pero para nosotros es mejor que haya competición. ¿Por qué? Porque nosotros manejamos una calidad muy buena y se trabaja mejor cuando hay competencia. ¿Por qué? Porque uno le pone más ganas, hace mejor calidad y, y tener al cliente contento para que esté bien y se vengan con nosotros. Unlike the cocaine exported by the cartel, Fentanyl is not transported by the ton in containers. Instead, once produced, the fentanyl tablets enter a diverse logistics chain, flowing toward the US. Monet is meeting up once again with the boss he interviewed a few days ago in his fentanyl lab. But this time, he's interviewing him in one of the dozens of hideouts where he stores his products in small quantities. <laughs> Can I touch? No, no, no puede tocar. No puede tocar nada, por favor. Which quantities of uh, M30 are there? Como 5,000 en cada uno. Are there many places like this one in Coyacán? Sí, así de pequeñas, así como este. Sí, varias. So your job is to, to guard the drugs, right? Solamente debe cuidar esto para que vengan y lo recojan. Hacen una llamada y yo entrego nada más. Es riesgoso porque vale mucho dinero estas cosas. What could happen? Pues podría pagar con mi vida si yo pues hago mal mi trabajo aquí. Es el riesgo que corre uno en la vida. Todo bien, todo bien. The boss is in constant contact with his scouts posted outside. Oh, mira, esto es lo que se preparó el otro día. No se puede decir, va directo en un camión, va directo en un tren, va directo en un avión. No se puede, tienen que salvar los etapas. Y las manejamos todas. Hasta aquí, pues. Todas las que hayan estén disponibles se manejan. Ah, creo okay, que okay, ya está, ya estoy aquí. Ah, pues está pendiente ahí, por favor. Porque estamos aquí cerquita. The next stop for these M30 tablets, the United States. More specifically, one of the cartel's main markets, New York. We turn now to the takedown of a major drug trafficking mill in New York City. Federal, state and local law enforcement officers announced the recovery of more than 40 pounds of suspected fentanyl. 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 There were more deaths from fentanyl last year than from the wars in Vietnam, Afghanistan and Iraq combined. The dealers who run the New York drug business buy millions of M30 tablets from cartel men based in the city. Dealers then sell the drug to thousands of customers every day. High uses stagger down the street and freeze, overtaken by M30's potency. Là, je suis à New York, à Manhattan. Alors, je suis venu ici pour observer la phase finale du trafic de fentanyl, la vente, la distribution. Euh, ici, je vais essayer de rencontrer euh, des dealers et des consommateurs de cette drogue. Monet gets in touch with a cartel leader in charge of sales. As planned, he calls him on WhatsApp to arrange a meeting. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, Okay, so you know, I mean, uh, I am right now in New York City, and is it is it possible to meet someone of the cartel of uh, Sinaloa here in New York? No, 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 no. It's not possible right now. No, 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 no. Why? Uh, because it is 
Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, but can I meet your partners here that sell the drugs? Is it possible to meet some of them? No, right now, no, right now. Uh, I can't handle that right now. Uh, he, he, he took right now, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, sir, thank you. Thank you. But he refuses. The cartel men are in hiding. A video El Chapo's son was extradited to the US only a few days ago. Two days later, Monet persuaded his contact to put him in touch with one of his biggest clients in New York. He has an appointment with the trafficking boss in Washington Heights, north of Manhattan, a hotspot for drug use in the city. He's agreed to meet with Monet on his ground. Let's go down, brother. This is the underworld for them to get high. And it, today's a Sunday. If you would have came like on a Monday, Tuesday, on a weekday, that's when the whole mob is out. And early in the morning. Yeah, from five to eight, because that's the time they wake up sick. They got to cure themselves in the morning. Look, he's shooting right now. This is cocaine. So you mix it with cocaine, right? Yes. Fentanyl plus cocaine. Fentanyl and cocaine. Users mix fentanyl with other drugs. Can you tell me what you just injected? Yeah, it's called a speedball. It's uh, cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl. How many shots do you take a day? Anywhere from six to ten shots a day. A shot is about fifteen dollars. So it's a lot of money every day. Yes, yes. How, how do you get this money? Uh, do what I, they call boosting. Take stuff from uh, anywhere, you know, supermarkets, uh, clothing stores, and sell it on the street. And then that's how that's how you make your money. How old are you? I'm 44. Do you have a family? Yes. Do you still live with the family? No, sir. I'm currently uh, on the streets. And do you think one day you can stop? Yes, yes, absolutely. I've been doing it for a long time, and uh, I think it's time to stop. Do you know this drug is killing step by step people who yeah, yeah, take it? Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. So are you prepared to, to die from this? No, I'm not prepared to die, but I mean, I know that it's a possibility, but I try to be as careful as I, as I can be when I, uh, when I purchase something and then I don't do a, a, a large amount. You know, I do very little you know, just in case.
you show me? Oh, these are the pills. And the blue one's at 30. And uh, the other one is another Oxycontin. For how long do you take uh, fentanyl? Um, I would say about uh, 13 years. How old are you? I'm 40. And how did you begin to take fentanyl? Um, well, when I was taking the, um, those, the blue pill that you saw before, the oxycodone 30 milligrams, I was on those for about eight years. And um, from early on, uh, I would run, off, run out of my prescription early, so I would buy heroin with it. And then I started selling them and getting heroin. So I'd say I've been doing this about 20 years. I snort and I shoot up. So I'd say I do two shots a day, two to three shots a day, and I snort maybe two to four times a day. So it's a lot of money. Well, it adds up. I used to do more. I, I used to do about 10 shots a day or more. And how do you find the money to buy this? Um, well, I do have a part-time job. I'm in the beauty industry. I do hair, makeup, nails, and um, I also sell things here. Do you sell the product yourself? Sometimes, yes. Yes. What is it? Fentanyl. Okay, this is a, a mix containing fentanyl, correct? Yes, yes. It's mostly fentanyl, but it does have heroin in it as well. Just want to see what I'm doing? Sure. So I like to cook, keep my cookers in a fancy box. It's already crushed up nicely, so I don't have to worry about crushing it. Okay. Now, before I break that down in water, I like to snort a little bit. I like to taste it. The dealer agrees to answer Monet's questions if they move away from the drug users. Can you tell me your position here in New York City? I'm one of the bosses in a position of power, you know. We put people to work, we get work from other places, and then we make a little profit. Simple. So you manage this area of New York City, correct? Yes, sir. The best area. Everybody knows that. Which products do you sell here? We sell everything and whatever we don't have, we'll fabricate it. But right now, the blockbuster is fentanyl. Look, this is pure fentanyl. This was one of the last things that came from the other side. What do you mean by the other side? Mexico. Do you buy it directly to the Mexicans? Of course. You mean you have Mexican partners here? Yes, sir. And then this is the same product. This is pure fentanyl too, but this comes from the Gulf. Gulf cartel. Which quantities of fentanyl do you sell every day here? You know, it depends. Sometimes, if it's the beginning of the month, then it sells most than any other day. You could sell three, four thousand dollars a day. When they get their checks, that's the best day. That's the beginning of the month and the middle of the month. What is the typical structure of your group? How many guys do work for you? Well, the way I work is I distribute. Whoever's outside working directly with the client, then that's the person that I want to work with. That's the person I sell to. I got like 10 to 12 different people like that that work in different locations here in New York. I get that at a price, I give them another price, I make my little commission on top and they break it down. They buy from me, they sell their stuff, they come back with the real money, and we do it again till the work is over, and that's how it goes. What is the price of one pill? 
We don't sell the pills. We crush them up, we sell them in powder. You grind the pills in the, the coffee grind, and then you just weigh the powder, and then one shot is $10. So what is your commission? It's $30 the gram. I make $30 profit off of the gram. So $30,000 on every kilo a brick, the way we call it here in New York. If it takes me a week to sell the brick, I make $30,000. So it's a very good business. You gotta do what you gotta do to survive, because these people demand it and somebody gotta supply you. What are the risks for you to do this job? Jail time, enemies, you name it. Is it possible that you are killed doing this job? 100%, of course. Very dangerous job, and it's also a depressing job because you see a lot of people die. A lot of people die from this stuff. This is not a safe thing to do, you know? What is the future of this business, do you think? I think it's gonna fall down because a lot of people is dying. A lot of people is dying and uh, they should have left the heroin because heroin was not killing people the way fentanyl was killing people. Do you have a family? Of course, this is what I do what I do for. I got four kids. Which life do you wish for them? The whole opposite of what I'm doing. I want them to go to school. I want them to graduate. I want them to be part of fraternities. I want them to learn. And I want them to make good friends and make good money where they don't have to think about nothing illegal. Cause you know, this is a, like a cat and a mouse game. So if you, you can make a lot of money today, but a week from now you could be in jail. Do you believe in God? Of course. And how do you leave your face doing this job? I don't feel bad because this is the world that I came into. Within all the negativity, I try to be the, the, the positivity. I'm one of the guys that'll tell these people, the day you don't want to do it, I'm all for it. But if people are demanding it, somebody got to supply it. If I don't do it, somebody else is going to do it and I'm going to be starving in my house. So, you know, I don't, I'm not too tough on myself for that. Every day, the fentanyl produced by the Sinaloa cartel kills hundreds of people. And every day, it brings in millions of dollars for the narcos. Millions that they invest in the legal economy after laundering it through tax havens. Particularly through the most opaque of them all, Dubai. 